Well, thank you very much for, uh, for giving us your, your time and co contributing to this series of interviews. Could I ask you first to introduce yourself? Uh, My name is Charles Norman. I'm the Edward Kennedy Professor of Health Policy and Management at Trinity College Dublin. And, and what sort of uh, work do you do? My main interest is in the effects of ageing in the population for health and social care. And I'm particularly involved with the Irish Longitudinal Study on Ageing, which is a cohort of 9,000 people that we're visiting every two years. Thank you. Um, we're going to be talking about long-term care, and it would be perhaps useful if you were to define what you mean by that, because it varies from one country to, to another. I mean, I think what I would include in long-term care is fairly comprehensive. That is, it includes care in nursing homes and other residential facilities. It includes care in your own home uh, provided by formal caregivers from the medical and uh, nursing and social care professions. It also includes care in your own home by your own family or friends and other informal carers. Thank you very much. Now, thinking about the current situation in Ireland, the long-term care system in Ireland, um, what would you say are the three main priorities or challenges that are being faced by, by government? Well, the, the most important thing, I think, is that we are ageing later than most other countries and therefore we have, in some senses, an opportunity to be better prepared and to be in a better position. And I would like to see the country very deliberately trying to organise itself to be well, well prepared for the ageing when it happens, because it is happening later. The community and primary care system in Ireland is very poorly developed, and that means there's a tendency for the care burden to fall either on the families or on the hospital and other uh, formal care system parts that are probably not appropriate for much of the care that's provided. So that would be a key priority, would be to try and put in place a better infrastructure in the community. But I think the most important single thing that could be done is to try and work on the incentives that are available around access to different kinds of care. Because at the moment the incentives tend to push you towards residential care rather than community care, and they tend to push you towards hospital care or more high dependency care than is, than is often needed. Any other priority that you want to mention, or are those the key? I think those are the key things. The, in some senses, one of them is a very large agenda, because it's about trying to put in place a coherent infrastructure where none exists at the moment. I think the particular needs to improve the community services in order to help people stay in their own homes, because there's a very large number of people who end up in the wrong care settings, but because a cheaper and better alternative is not available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, there's in, in many countries um, the, the long-term care system or, and the, the, the stakeholders in the long-term care system are complaining about the impact of the financial crisis, the international crisis. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is relevant to, uh, to the Irish it, context? It's highly relevant. As you may know, Ireland has been hit harder than most countries by the financial crisis, both because the banking crisis in Ireland was so serious but also the fiscal situation was made worse by some very unwise previous decisions about how to manage the tax base. So that a lot of decisions at the moment are reflecting that old adage, <coughs> you cut where you can, not where you should. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the cuts have affected long-term care because those people are not on long-term contracts often, that, you know, the staff that work there, because the savings there may not be desirable, but they're fairly easy to achieve. So there's a real problem at that level. But there's also a problem that the health service in general has suffered very major cutbacks, and it has become congested in various ways, and that has had a knock-on effect on the long-term care system. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you could think of yourself as some benevolent dictator, um, and you had the opportunity to introduce one policy linked to long-term care uh, in Ireland, which, which one would it be? I think it would be strengthening the system of finance for home care packages and things of that sort. There is already a system in place, so I wouldn't be looking to put a new system in. I'd be looking to strengthen and support the existing system that's there. There is also a system of state-provided home helps and home care workers, which doesn't work very well. It tends to be very inflexible, and I'd be probably looking to move towards a comprehensive home care package approach where there could be state and non-state people employed to, to try and provide support for people in their own homes. Do you see this happening in the near future? 
I think we may make some progress there, partly because there is an understanding now that if we can do the same thing at a lower cost or if we can accommodate the growing needs within the existing budget, that's really the only way forward. We don't have any fiscal space at the moment in order to improve the funding of this sector, so we really need to find better ways of managing the existing resources. Thanks. Now, those are policy priorities, but if we think now about the research priorities and you know, what would be this, that piece of research that really is necessary at the moment in Ireland? Well, I think in this whole area, the devil is in the detail, and my argument is that far too much of the research has suggested that somehow one size fits all. And we really need to start delving into a much more detailed understanding of how the demographics are changing, and I, I'm particularly interested in the issue of converging life expectancy between men and women. I believe from the evidence we have so far, and I hope from the evidence that we're accumulating through new studies, that we'll be able to show that converging life expectancy significantly reduces the burden on formal care. This is because there are more viable households with two or more people if you have longer life expectancy in men. Men are already significant caregivers in the elderly population. It's older people looking after older people is very significantly how this happens. And I think we, we should see both that there are fewer dependent men because not only life expectancy is improving, but health seems to be improving too. But also, we will get a better understanding of how they contribute to the care system overall. So in, increasing life expectancy is one example of the detailed understanding that I'm looking for in the demographics and how that knocks on to the uh, delivery of care. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now to finish, I would like to ask you five quick questions. And, and these are, in these questions, I'm asking you to rate the Irish long-term care system on a scale from one, which, where one is the worst, to ten is the best. Um, starting with, um, in your view, how much of a policy priority long-term care is in Ireland? I would say probably around about two or three. It's not been seen as being a priority in the past. And I think it's a priority only because people are so panicked about the knock-on effect of poor long-term care on the other parts of the health system. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking now about the, the general population and their awareness of what the long-term care system is and, uh, and has got to offer them where they do need it. Well, I think people are very aware of the deficiencies in the system at the moment. There's a lot of public debate about the difficulties and recently there was an attempt to institute a fairly small cut in support for one element of long-term care and that led to people in wheelchairs sleeping outside the parliament for two nights. Mm -hmm. So it clearly there is a public uh, awareness of some of these issues, but there's never been strong public support for developing the infrastructure of long-term care. I think it's, it tends to be around particular population groups with particular needs. There isn't any sort of view of this as being an overall priority area of, of importance. Mm -hmm. I know it's difficult, but if I then had to push you for, for a rating, what would you give it? I would, uh, I would say the population understanding is, of the issues is probably four or five but in some subgroups in the population it would be eight or nine. Mm, thank you. Um, now thinking as a whole again, and uh, you know, it's always a, you know, a challenge, but as a whole in Ireland, people with long-term care needs, how do you think their needs are being met? I think the answer is patchy. It's therefore probably the overall rating would be four or five. For people who require residential long-term care, I think the system is doing better and it's doing quite well in, in some parts of the country. The quality standards have improved a lot through much better inspection systems, so there's been some real investment in trying to make that part work better. In terms of helping people stay in their own homes, it's not really working all that well. There are schemes, but they're a bit patchy, and there's a, it's still a little bit of a lottery of whether you get access to what you really need. Mm -hmm. And what about the needs of the carers, or the informal carers? I think there is only very recently an awareness of the importance of this group. I think a few years ago they were just an invisible army of people who were providing the support. I think there is now an awareness that caring for the carers is a key part of keeping people out of the formal care system and providing a little bit of input can have a very big payback in terms of reducing the burden elsewhere. But carers I think are only very recently on the, on the agenda. So probably again sort of three or four would be, would be a generous mark there. Thank you. And now to finish, um, how well do you think are the different pieces of the puzzle, as it were, 
coordinate different services? I think it'd be hard to be polite about that. Uh, at the moment, the system is very fragmented. The incentives are keeping it fragmented. The management structures are being changed, but in some ways making it more fragmented. And there is no very clear policy coherence that will be pulling it all together. There's a determination in government both to have a coherent system and, and, and have diverse providers. And they don't seem to have recognized that these two positions are largely incompatible. I think the coherence is one of the, the lack of coherence is one of the really key issues. And I would, being generous, I would be giving the government two or three for coherence. Well, thank you very much.